The experiment was to be stopped before the core went super critical. But when the scientist turns to view the results, he finds... Are you kidding me? He really dropped... <laughs> you guys can't have rookies on these jobs, bro. Are you for real? That actually happened. You literally dropped it right on the... <laughs> Later in the void. What's going on, everyone? It's your boy, Savvy. And welcome back to the Savvy Show. And just like clockwork, Dr. Bob just dropped a SCP animation. And this one looks pretty interesting. Hopefully, it's a creepy one on our hands, guys. Today, it's SCP-095-FR, the Demon Core. So with the abbreviations FR, I'm assuming this SCP is from France and the Demon Core. So hopefully we get to see some cool demon powers or potentially something crazy going on with this SCP. I, I want this to be a banger so bad, but like always, the only way to find out is if we dive deep. So we gotta get it going. So with that being said, if you guys are excited for this reaction, please remember to smash that like button, smash that sub button, and hit that bell so you can stay plugged for each and every upload. And let's get this video to 100 likes before the next upload. That's gonna be our new benchmark going forward. So let's get it done. Let's hit 100 likes on this one, and let's get it popping together. So without any further ado, let's get this show started. Alrighty, the Demon Core SCP-095-FR. A scientist sits in his lab working on an experiment when the door suddenly opens and a tall, hard-nosed man enters. The scientist hastily stands up and salutes the general who oversees the scientist's entire program. The general dispenses with formalities and tells the scientist that he's being assigned to something new. Before the scientist can even ask what it is he'll be working on, the general gives a small wave of his hand and two soldiers appear in the doorway. They are each holding the side of a large metal box, and from the strained expression on their faces, that it's clear that the box is very heavy. So they set the box down on the scientist's heavy wooden desk with a loud thud before stepping away from it. The scientist looks over the bulky lead case that's been brought to him, no idea of what could be waiting inside. Be very careful with this, the general says, before handing a folder full of papers to the scientist. The scientist, unsure of how to respond, moves his <laughs> hand to salute the general. But he has already turned on his heel and started oh my to exit God, the small know lab, what he's doing. followed closely behind by the two soldiers. Yo. The scientist looks over the folder that was given to him. There's nothing on the cover, so he opens it and starts looking inside, skimming over the long, dry paragraphs that say nothing at all and seem to be included in every government report for some reason. Has a manual? Ah, there it is. Contents. One 6.2 kilogram sphere of plutonium-239. Plutonium-239? He's been doing research in this army-run research lab for some time know and what knows it is. exactly what this is. A sphere of plutonium-239 can only be one thing. A core for a new atomic bomb. Two were already dropped on the cities of Hiroshima and Nagasaki, and their never-before-seen power caused death and destruction on a truly horrendous level. But they had also helped to put an end to the Second World War, potentially saving the lives of thousands or even millions more. And no matter what moral questions he had about it, this was his job, and as an expert in physics and chemistry, his research would potentially help put a stop to fighting in the future. Let's After see. all, no one would dare go to war when they knew their opponent had weapons that could cause devastation on this scale, right? The scientist pours over the typewritten records, reading each and every handwritten note in the margins. As he reads through them, he sees warnings about the experiments from the report's unnamed author. There are references to how slim the safety margins are when handling the material for testing. Since the core is intended to be used in a new nuclear weapon, it needs to be right on the edge of supercriticality, the point where fissile material undergoes a chain reaction that is key to nuclear detonations. What the heck? The report then describes an experiment where the core was to be surrounded with bricks made of tungsten carbide that would act as a mirror of sorts, bouncing neutrons back at the core, which would knock loose other neutrons. The experiment was to be stopped before the core went super critical. But when the scientist turns to view the results, he finds... Are you kidding me? He really dropped... He... You guys can't have rookies on these jobs, bro. Are you for real? That actually happened. You literally dropped it right on the... <laughs> Yo, that was probably like the low-key most funniest part. <laughs> this whole episode so far. I have to see that shit again. What the heck? <laughs> Act as a mirror of sorts, bouncing neutrons back at the core, which would knock loose other neutrons. <laughs> the experiment was to be stopped before the core went super critical. But when the scientist turns the page to view the results, yo, that's crazy. I mean, I could put myself in that, like, I could put myself in his shoes, but still, like, you should. <laughs> you just got spooked out. You really going to just drop everything? Oh no, I guess everyone's different. I shouldn't be judging too much. Results, he finds nothing. There's no more pages in the folder. The scientists had heard rumors about these types of experiments, tickling the dragon's tail, they called it. 
But where were the rest of the reports? Was this really the last experiment that was done? He sees at the top of the page that this last experiment was performed over a year ago. Just then, the scientist notices someone walking by in the hall. It's the general. He runs out into the hallway, waving the report at him. General! General! The general stops and turns around, clearly annoyed at being intercepted while on the way from one important <laughs> meeting to another. General, what happened in the last experiment? The general somehow looks even more annoyed by the question. Uh -oh. Don't worry about it, he barks back at the scientist. His time on the project was finished. It's yours now. Oh, because he died. And with that, the general leaves the scientist standing in the hall with his incomplete file. Bruh. Days pass, and the scientist receives additional orders on what types of experiments he should be carrying Damn. out. All of them are designed to guarantee that the core of plutonium will be suitable for use in a new weapon. For the latest test, he's performing an experiment not dissimilar to the last one described in the report. But instead of using tungsten carbide bricks to reflect neutrons back at the core and achieve criticality, a beryllium dome had been created, which is to be lowered down over the sphere of plutonium. I really hope there's some concept of a demon within this core. I'm going to know vibes that there might be, so hopefully this one will surprise us, because I'm not too sure what to expect, besides what we already know. As he lowers the dome, he knows that if it were to close completely, it would cause the core to go supercritical in an instant. In order to prevent this, he uses a screwdriver to prop up one side of the dome, allowing just enough neutrons to escape so that the core can maintain its stability. Smart. As he lowers the dome just a small amount more, he starts to hear something. It's a faint noise at first, but gradually grows more and more audible. Radioactivity produces no sound, so the scientist is confused, especially since it sounds like the noise is coming from inside the dome. Hopefully it's those little spooky skeleton ghosts that we saw from the last dude that dropped everything that he was holding on top of this freaking core. Hopefully it's, that's like the demon stuff. But surely that's impossible. There were no processes happening within that should be creating any sort of noise. The scientist bends down and lifts up the edge of the dome ever so slightly more, just enough so that he can peek inside. As he does, the sound grows louder. He looks right into the core of plutonium-239 and sees something. There is movement on the sphere. He knows this is impossible, but he can see them with his own eyes. Images dancing on the surface of the plutonium sphere. They were faces, unnatural faces, contorted and twisted in pain. Oh, wow. He can see now that these are the source of the sound he was hearing. One of them is a human because face. the faces are screaming. The scientist jumps back, and the screwdriver slips away from the edge of the beryllium dome, allowing it to fall and completely cover the plutonium. Out in the hallway, a security guard covers his eyes, momentarily blinded by the flash of intense blue light. When his vision returns, he runs into the laboratory it came from. The exposed sphere of plutonium sits on the desk, and the security guard looks up to see that the dome that once covered it has been embedded into the ceiling. Oh my god! He hears a moan come from the other side of the desk and rushes around to help the scientist. But when he looks down at the ground, he doesn't see a man. Lying there on the floor is a charred and bloody body. The small amount of skin and flesh that is left Bro. sloughing off his body. The scientist reaches toward him with a skeletal hand, emitting one final groan before collapsing. Oh my god! Nuclear weapons have claimed many lives, not just those who suffered directly from their overwhelming destructive energy or the subsequent residual radiation known as fallout, but many of those who researched and developed the science and technology behind them also became victims of their incredible, almost otherworldly power. I think his face was in the um, little little demon core when the other dude was looking. We saw all those faces and we saw a guy that had a similar face like his. I'm pretty sure the people that die from this core get sucked into the core maybe. We shall see. Today's anomaly is an example of exactly that, combining the astonishing power of nuclear weapons with the world of the supernatural. This is SCP-095-FR. Yep, it's definitely him. You can see the little mole. Yep, I was right. <laughs> the Demon Core. You guys can see it better too, right here. The same mole that the other dude had, and similar hairstyle. SCP-095-FR is a 6.2 kilogram sphere, 89 millimeters in diameter, that is composed entirely of plutonium-239. Despite at one point seeming to be a normal sphere of the plutonium isotope, SCP-095-FR now seems to be in a permanent, self-sustaining state of criticality. This results in a near-constant emission of alpha radiation, which is powerful enough to damage any electrical circuits within a 20-meter radius. The sphere's danger grows the closer you get to it, too. Within a 10-meter radius, any living tissue will become extremely irradiated, leading to radiation sickness, while denser materials like metal or bone will themselves become extremely radioactive. 
the plutonium sphere is somehow able to maintain a consistent mass, despite its state, which should lead to a decrease in overall mass. It's theorized that it may be undergoing some sort of regenerative process, though it's been impossible to determine just how this might be occurring. SCP-095-FR was recovered from the seafloor near Bikini Atoll, which was the site of a series of nuclear weapon tests by the United States government known as Operation Crossroad. That makes sense. These and later tests, including the Castle Bravo test, resulted in the island chain becoming extremely irradiated, and many of the island's residents soon showed signs of acute radiation syndrome, so leading to much up. of the indigenous population being forced to relocate. Following the Operation Crossroad test, an anomalously high source of radiation was detected in the sea. Though records are incomplete, it appears that the core of plutonium that had been responsible for the deaths of multiple scientists had somehow ended up on the ocean floor. Whether it got there due to being part of a failed bomb detonation, or if it somehow appeared there by other, more anomalous means, is unknown. But regardless of how it got there, the attempted recovery of the object led to the deaths of several American service members from radiation-related illnesses, which the SCP Foundation soon learned of. After assisting in the retrieval of the sphere, the plutonium was relinquished to the Foundation's custody for containment. The SCP-095-FR sphere was placed under the purview of the French branch of the SCP Foundation, owing to their having a readily available site for containment, where the sphere was stored in a lead-lined radiation-blocking safe and classified as Euclid. Only D-Class were permitted to transport and handle the plutonium, since its effects amounted to a death sentence for anyone who got too close. They were also responsible for transferring the sphere to a new safe every six months, due to the damage it was causing them from constant bombardment of radiation. All of these containment procedures would have to be changed, though, following the events of January 7, 2015. On that day, 69 years after it first took the lives of two scientists at the Los Alamos Laboratory, oh, and despite are. it being a scientific impossibility, <clears throat> the Demon Corps suddenly went supercritical all on its own. Damn! The resulting explosion was estimated to be roughly 33 kilotons, or about twice the power of the atomic bombs that had been detonated over Hiroshima and Nagasaki. Nearly the entire site Bruh. causing SCP-095-FR was destroyed, along with 14 other safe and Euclid-class anomalies, and... It killed over a dozen other SCPs along the way. Wow. That is what... Hopefully it's neutralized now. Hopefully it doesn't like regenerate or something comes back to just being a regular core. In the end, the death count totaled 285, with casualties coming from either the blast itself, the collapse of structures on the site, or from the resulting radiation 285 poison. deaths. Incredibly, the sphere itself survived the explosion. Are you kidding? No signs that it had detonated with the force of a nuclear weapon when it was recovered from the site's wreckage. What the heck? Foundation researchers studying the Demon Core determined that it was likely to explode again in roughly 50 years, and that the only discernible difference measured in the core before it suddenly went supercritical and destroyed the Foundation site was a sudden spike in radiation. Put that back underwater, like, for real. Like, don't even have that at a facility. Because you never really know. Like, it's 50 years maybe, but who knows, bro? Like, who knows? Foundation scientists have no idea how the Demon Core survived, or how it detonated without warning. For real. Some theorize that it may <clears throat> exist in some kind of time loop, which would potentially explain its explosion regeneration cycle, and that it is possible the Core has actually detonated several times before entering into Foundation custody. But perhaps the bigger question when it comes to the Demon Core and why it has become such a dangerous object, is why. Is there something contained within this seemingly cursed sphere of plutonium? Is it a part of those who have been impacted by the quest to harness the power of atomic energy somehow contained within? Now desperate to get out and unleash their anger on the world? Research continues, but due to the extreme danger that comes from working with the anomaly, it's likely these questions will remain unanswered for some time. Following the destruction of the Foundation site, SCP-095-FR was reclassified to Keter and moved to an underground bunker designed to withstand an explosion equivalent to a standard atomic bomb, okay. which it is hoped will be enough to contain the blast that is almost inevitably going to happen again. Yeah, this is, like, pointless to even keep it, steady it. Like, it's not worth the risk. It took out a whole site. 200 and something people died. 14, like, I think 14 anomalies. Yo, this is ruining more stuff for you guys. I don't know. I feel like they should just put it under the water. It's a sobering thought even for those of us who work with and around anomalies on a daily basis, to be reminded of the incredible destructive power of nuclear weapons. Some of the most feared and deadly anomalies contained by the SCP Foundation pale in comparison to the carnage that we've inflicted on ourselves. 
and it's important to remember that sometimes the true demons are found inside of us. That's interesting. I want to hear that again. It's a sobering <laughs> thought, even for those of us who work with and around anomalies on a daily basis, to be reminded of the incredible destructive power of nuclear weapons. Some of the most feared and deadly anomalies contained by the SCP Foundation pale in comparison to the carnage that we've inflicted on ourselves. And it's important to remember that sometimes the true demons are found inside of us. Now go that and watch so another true. entry from the files of Dr. Bob. So like true. SCP Dr. Bob, you're wild. For another anomalous object with a strange and deadly secret. This guy's flexing too much. I think this is the worst he's ever done so far at the end of the video. <laughs> this guy's playing with this SCP, bro. And make sure you subscribe the and turn face on in the notifications core. so you don't miss a single anomaly as we delve further and further into the SCP Foundation's classified archives. <laughs> Dr. Bob's gonna blow up and then we'll see his face in the core and we'll finally get a face reveal. <laughs> But yeah, this was cool, man. Um, hopefully you guys all like this reaction. This SCP, uh, honestly, nothing crazy, to be honest. From um, from what I'm used to, from Dr. Bob, nothing out of the ordinary. His shit's always bangers. This is a good one. Um, it just seems pretty simple on surface level. But I definitely like the concept of um, why it's erupting every single time. Because maybe the souls are trying to, you know, get out or whatever. Or the people that was trying to har harness the power of, you know, a nuke. So, I mean, that part was unique in itself, but um, all in all, it was a decent SCP. Let me know what you guys thought about it in the comments section below. And also remember to smash that like button if you enjoyed it, and especially if you made it all the way to the end. <laughs> Come on now, quit playing with me. And also remember to hit that bell so you can stay plugged for each and every upload. And unfortunately, that concludes today's episode. However, I'll catch you guys on the next one.